Okay, let's look at the period of Weimar Germany from 1924 to 1929, the so-called golden years of the Weimar Republic. And the key question basically is this, how far did the Weimar Republic recover during that time? Well, in many ways there appeared to be stability and recovery, and this politician on the right, Gustav Stresemann, was a key figure in that. So certainly, as we just said, it appeared to be stable and prosperous, especially compared to the crises of 1918 to 1923. If you compare it to the events of the German Revolution, uh, the Spartacist Revolt, the Cap Putsch, the Munich Putsch, and so on, it's a relatively stable and prosperous time. Stresemann himself was Chancellor during those crisis uh, months of 1923, and he was a key figure in government throughout the whole period, foreign minister from 1923 to 1929. And certainly, in many ways, the Weimar uh, government appeared to recover. Germany appeared to recover under the Weimar government. So that's the key question. You should really sort of make notes of strengths and weaknesses under these four topics. Now, apologies to uh, Gustav Stresemann. It's just his nice bald head uh, created a space where I could uh, put these titles on. So make notes under economic recovery. What are the sort of facts and evidence for economic recovery and economic weaknesses. The same for politics within Germany, how stable was the politics, uh, international successes under Stresemann and social successes and again problems under Stresemann. And Stresemann really is such a key figure throughout this period that basically any German successes in a large sense can be tied to him. Let's have a look at his achievements then. So obviously he wasn't actually a saint. He was actually really a very right-wing politician, but he was a very pragmatic, realistic man and realised that Germany could only succeed through negotiation. So although he was hated by many on the right and on the, I met some on the left actually, um, he was a pragmatic man. 1924, he helped end hyperinflation with the Dawes Plan and the introduction of a new currency, the Rentenmark. 1926, the Treaty of Locarno. This was a treaty with France and Belgium where um, the western borders were agreed and it, it kind of changed the status of Germany, uh, in a, for, excuse me, not to be seen as a defeated nation now, it's kind of an equal nation. It's agreed not to use force to alter the borders. This uh, success for Stresemann leads to withdrawal of foreign troops from the Rhineland. It's still demilitarised. Germany's not allowed troops there, but foreign troops are withdrawn. And in 1926, in a sort of international recognition of Germany, uh, Germany joins the League of Nations. That's a real sort of international success for Stresemann. Furthermore, between 1924 and 1929, throughout this, this period of the Weimar Republic, 25 uh, billion Excuse me, I got my maths wrong. 25,000, yeah, that's 25 billion, oops. 25 billion uh, marks in US investment helped to rejuvenate, invigorate uh, the, the economy, the German economy. So let's move on. Furthermore, he was an instrumental figure in uh, creating coalitions of moderate centre parties, which meant that the government could function, it could make laws. Uh, there were social reforms uh, while Stresemann was a key politician. Uh, unemployment pay, better housing for poorer workers. And he, in fact, won the Nobel Peace Prize uh, for the Locarno Treaties, which led to the acceptance of Germany into the League of Nations. So a lot of achievements for Stresemann. And basically, so Stresemann's achievements are kind of Weimar strengths as well. Let's have a closer look at the economy, though. So certainly, uh, under the Dawes Plan, if you have a look over here, actually, it's sort of helpful to have a look at the flow of money internationally. So this money is coming from the United States. Two and a half billion uh, in loans is coming into Germany. Now, two billion is then being used to pay reparations. That leaves half a billion that can be invested in the German economy and, and, and sort of kickstart it, keep it going. And the Allies, of course, are using uh, the reparations to pay back their war debt. War debt. <laughs> war debt. What's that? Uh, war debt to the United States. Uh, the thing is, though, this dependence on foreign loans, oh, by the way, I got this picture from a, a, a dollar loans website with dreadful interest rates, very unscrupulous. Anyway, never mind. So this dependence on foreign loans, uh, very much <laughs> as the example I've just been saying, this dependence on foreign loans uh, was a risk. In fact, Gustav Stresemann himself said, we are dancing on a volcano. 
which hardly is a picture of permanent stability. So let's have a look at those Weimar weaknesses in a bit more detail. And again, note under the same four headings, uh, political, economic, and so forth. So the economy was dependent on foreign loans. This made it vulnerable. It made it weak to international money markets and investor confidence if people lost faith in companies and stocks, they could withdraw their money and that would cause a collapse. Worldwide as well, and this especially hit German farmers, were falling agricultural prices. Um, it's not clearly understood why agricultural prices fell. It seems to be due to increased mechanization, use of technology, and incorporation of smaller farms into bigger ones. Well, most German farmers were actually small farmers and they were really hit hard by falling agricultural prices. So farmers were people that certainly did not benefit from the apparent uh, recovery of the Weimar period. And many of these in, in the end would end up voting Nazi as the crisis deepens. Heavy industry itself, the big industries of steel and so on, struggled to make profits. Um, you remember that trade unions were something allowed under this, the fundamental rights, the civil rights, but there were frequent strikes and industrial disputes. And this caused heavy industry to kind of resent Weimar democracy as well to an extent. Uh, coalitions were formed, uh, but also frequently collapsed. Uh, very dangerously, one collapsed in 1930 and paved the way for the eventual rise of the Nazis. So yes, there were strengths, there were also weaknesses. The Great Depression then. This hit, uh, it was uh, seeds of the weaknesses which would uh, blossom into the Great Depression were already there in the 1920s. We already talked about the farmers struggling, uh, the fact that so much of the recovery was dependent on debt, and a crash on Wall Street in 1929 was pretty much a trigger factor which sped up an economic collapse which lasted through the 1930s known as the Great Depression. Okay, so let's look at a summary of those. So in many ways there was a recovery. I've, I've, I've bolded the economic there because that's such a key one. Uh, you should have made the notes of uh, sort of uh, evidence for economic recovery, political, international and social. Stresemann being a key part of that. Uh, the Dawes Plan, negotiating the loans, uh, the Locarno Treaties leading to Germany being admitted to the League in 1926. There were, however, weaknesses. The dependence on loans, the fact that coalitions uh, could collapse, Farmers were struggling and waiting in the wings were the communists and the Nazis. They didn't go away. They were well organized and they were waiting to exploit a crisis, a crisis which did come about with the Great Depression. Okay, I hope you've made some decent uh, notes there. Don't forget there are some really good websites out there. There's the BBC uh, Bite Size website and John D. Clare's website. I hope you made some decent notes and uh, well, there you go.